fine. Okay, done. So, the topic today would be optics and um, just a second. Okay, so basically we have two kinds of lens, one of them is basically like this and this sort of lens is the converging lens. Converging lens has another name actually, it's called Excuse me, sir, I cannot see the screen. I cannot see the screen. Acha, that's not fair. Who can't see the screen? Rabia. Yes, sir, I cannot see the screen. Everybody else? Is is that the same problem with you? No, sir, I can see. I can see. see. Rabia, your internet is okay? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, Rabia, can you rejoin the class, please? Probably something wrong with okay. either Skype or your device or something like that. <coughs> okay, and the okay, other one is basically, this one is called the diverging lens. Diverging lens has another name. We call it as concave lens. And I remember this because if you look at it, it looks like a cave from one side. That's why. Okay, like that. Anyway, it was just a small thing. Now, what I want you to understand is that when, why they're called converging, diverging lens, because when the light basically enters, like parallel light enters from like here. Sir, can you please repeat the topic? Can I do what? Can you repeat the topic? Which topic, topic are we doing? We are doing optics. Okay, sir. Okay. And then you can see the screen now, right? Rabia? Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. So then they're like parallel lines coming like parallel parallel rays they're onto this right like that and like that and oh i have got to make so many rays so basically all the rays they converge at a single point Gonna move that a bit, and <coughs> these basically go like this. At a single point, they come together. Like this. Is it clear, everybody? So basically what it has done is that it has caused all the rays to converge to a single point and that's why it is called a converging lens. Understood everybody? Now for a diverging yes, lens, I'm going to move Sir, I have a question. Yes. Go ahead. Sir, in spectacles what lenses are used? Interesting, but you got to wait for that. Okay. 
and I will tell you that. Don't worry. Okay, just hold on for a few moments. Okay, so then in this one, the diverging one. Basically, instead of like coming to one point altogether, I need to basically make it turn it into this one shape sort of thing. So what happens is that they just from the center it just goes straight. In every lens that's the same. But they just diverge means like they go away from the point. Is it clear everybody? That's how it works. So that's why because the rays are getting, you know, they, they're going away now. So that's why we call this a diverging lens. Understood? Okay, now. Now, looking at a lens like this, let's talk about certain things. So you guys have drawn this, should I go move forward? Okay. Hussein, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good too. So now let's look at this. So when you have a lens like at the center, like this, so from the very center of the lens, we can draw a line, and this line is basically called the principal the principal wait not this principal this one principal axis okay then on that line at equal distances if it's the same lens like from both sides there are two points mainly call them f like this and the point here f so they're basically the same distance from each other this f point is called the focal point f okay and from the very center of the lens you can also find this the distance and this is small f which is called the focal length. Focal length means how far the focal point is from the center of the lens. Is it clear everybody? This point where the center of the lens meets the principal axis, this point is known as the optical center. Understood everybody? Now, if I want to go like this point, this length is also focal length. But if I want to go to suppose a length that is somewhat twice of focal length, so that point is gonna be 2f, which means it is like another point that is twice away from like <coughs> the center and basically it lies on both sides so this would also be here as 2f is it clear everybody will you be remember all of this will you remember this yes sir okay Shavez, please come on time okay next time this is not fair 
now now let's look at case by case and then you'll understand where they are used and uh, how the images are formed because you might have to do them in the exam paper as well and they come really often right so first case let's do that so this time what I'm going to do is instead of making the whole lens so it's going to take some time I'm just going to make the principal axis like this okay there has to be an arrow here and then let's make um, the lens from the center just making a dotted line so that you know that this is the center of the lens and then I'm going to make F on this side and F on this side so I'm doing it with my hands so it's not it might not be as you know accurate just uh, something like that okay and 2f is going to be twice focal length like that okay so this is just uh, well the right side looks a bit closer to me but that's fine okay so I'm gonna copy this a second please So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put an image usually it will be shown by an arrow in your object uh, in your exam as well so let's suppose this is our object that we have placed beyond to it so what i'm writing is that object is beyond to f beyond means it's uh, uh, i mean like even before to f not i'm not before just after 12 and now we're going to look at where the image is going to be formed and for that you guys need to basically construct it and see what I'm doing so whenever you drawing images like this the first line should always be drawn straight towards the center of the lens so this is your first step and then the line must always pass through F because it will converge it so that's the second step let me write it here and the third step would be that you take another ray from the same point and then make it go through the optical center but whenever a ray goes through an optical center the ray never bends so this means that this point would be where the image is gonna form like this is it clear everybody yes, sir. so that's our third point so i'm just writing a note here so you guys do not forget and the note is that the ray that passes through optical center goes undeflected which means it never deflects or retracts or anything like that just goes straight understood yes now if you look at the image image basically forms between F and 2F that's where the image is now okay so Anaya do you understand this yes sir right. now, now let's look at some of the properties of this image number one this image basically is a real image when I say something is real it basically means it forms 
onto a screen. So basically you're looking at this image from this point and you can see it's forming in the eye. So that's why it's a real image. You might also realize that it is basically inverted. Inverted means that it is upside down. So object was like going up, it is down. Like this is our image. Sorry, I can't write it. And the third thing you guys need to remember is that it is diminished. Diminished means, basically this word means smaller than the object, right? So it's smaller than what the object was. So it's more like that. Is it clear everybody? Any questions? All right. Now, what could this be? This is basically an example of camera or our eye. Because when we look at, uh, look at an image from a very, very far distance away, that basically object looks smaller than it actually is. Do you guys understand? So who likes to watch stars and moon at night? Somebody? Afan, do you think the moon is of the same size that we see every day? No, sir. It's basically much bigger, but because you're looking at it from your eye or you take a picture, so basically moon looks much smaller. That's why it is how our eye or a camera functions. Everybody understands now? Yes, sir. Sometimes they would also ask you to draw a third uh, ray. So basically there, these are back, basically two rays, one that bends and one that goes straight. If third ray is asked, so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna start from the same point, you're gonna make it go through the F like this. Okay, my F should be actually here, not there. So I'm gonna erase this F. I'm gonna place it closer because this is very, very important. Let's fix these things. So this is my F. So you move this through F. And now naturally to F will also be closer. So then the ray is going to, when, it, when it's already gone through F, it will not bend through F, it will just go straight. Is it clear? Well, I don't think that basically solved my problems. Wait a second, please. In your exam, it will be like given to you on a grid sheet, so it will be much easier. So F has to be somewhere here. All right, is it clear everybody? Any questions? So that basically blue is the third ray and draw if asked. Is it clear everybody? It's not necessary all the time. Rabia, are you getting this? Yes, sir. Now I'd like to move to the next. So the next image we're gonna see. Let's put in the whole thing here again. And this is our lens. This time, what you're gonna do is now, of course, this will be a little bit different because exactly I don't know where the heights are. So suppose we place the object right at 2f. Okay, so this is our object. And this time, our object is basically <coughs> at 2f. And we would like to know where the image is formed. And we can easily do this. So the first ray again, you're gonna 
take it from the top, move it straight. So that's your first step. And the neg next step is that you take the ray through F like this. So this is the second step. And the third step is that you always go through the optical center. Okay. I knew this set wasn't right, <coughs> but never mind. We have to fix it a bit as well. So, wait a second, please. Let me just uh, fix this. This is not actually entirely correct. So, F has to be somewhere here to F even beyond that. So now you go to F, go through this, right, like that. And basically, where the image forms, the image forms like exactly on 2F, like this, all right? So that's much better. I should copy this rather than the previous one. It was not too accurate. Okay, now you might see that when the object is at 2F, then the image is also at 2F, exactly. And now we can talk about some properties. First of all, again, because your eye would be right here, looking from here. So that would mean that, number one, it is a real image formed on the screen number two it is inverted as you can see it's upside down and the third thing is that it is same size it's neither diminished nor enlarged it is exactly the same size as the object is understood all right if you have any questions let me know So the example of this is a photocopier machine and a photocopier basically uses you put one sort of an image an object inside and it produces a very similar same size object as a print image as a print is it clear everybody any questions let me know please okay now Iman and Caroline, do you guys understand this? Yes. Okay. Now let's move to the third one now. I don't know if I copied. So the third one. I hope you guys have drawn this. I will send the notes for this one to you because I truly understand that it is harder for you to draw this it's without grid it's very very hard actually i should have used the grid i could do that but so dumb of me anyway i'm gonna erase all of this and now let's look at what happens when the object is kept before okay sorry between F and 2F. So now what we're going to do is we're going to place the object right, my friends, right here between F and 2F, right? Which means before 2F really. And we would like to know where the image is formed. And let's see. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a line that is straight. Okay, this doesn't same straight to me from the top of the arrow okay so this is our object so this is the first thing you want to do and then the next thing you want to do is you're going to try and bend it from F like this always 
and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to start from the same point go through the optical center okay interesting so this is my ray I need to draw it again because it doesn't meet up to that point so basically it meets oh my god my rays have shortened somewhere here right and now it's right here and I'm gonna make the image the image would look like this that's the image all right everybody now the image has basically is formed beyond 2f so it's gone beyond 2f and it's so large right so in 10 minutes when the meeting ends right so you guys need to uh, rejoin it using the same link okay now so first of all let's write some properties of this image so first of all this is a real image why it is a real image because it is forming right with the eyes it is basically inverted and the third thing is that it is magnified now there are two words that you can use so you can either say it's magnified or you can also call this as enlarged and both words work so don't worry about it okay is it clear everybody okay please draw this and then I'm gonna tell you that how come this is here Sorry? Can you explain the second one again? Uh, this one? Yeah. So basically I'm doing the same thing. I'm drawing a ray straight first and then I'm bending the ray um, towards F, right? It passes through F. And then one ray that goes straight. And I'm doing nothing really. Wherever they meet, I make the image, right? So the image forms exactly to F it's a real image it's inverted as you can see and it is the same size as you can see from the diagram itself right okay sir okay so basically the diagram itself tell you what to do so and how the image would look so that's how it works okay and for that guy Okay, all right, so we were here, so you can draw this now, please. Sir, um, what if the image is on F, I mean the object is on F? Yeah, we're going to do that, so you've got to wait for everything. I'm going to do everything, no worry, okay? Okay. Just draw this, and then wait. Okay, you guys done? Should I go forward then? What do you guys say? Yes, sir. Okay. So, then... This is basically binoculars. 
This is not magnifying glass. Never write it as magnifying glass. Binoculars basically make things look bigger, but that's the real image. So you guys need to remember that. Okay, I'm just putting every. So real images do not have. Remember this. A lot of people make this mistake and they confuse this for magnifying glass. But real image is magnifying glass does not show a real image. So you don't have to write that. Please don't. Okay. Now let's look at what uh, Chavez has suggested and he wanted us to basically tell, tell you that how um, this other image okay, is formed. So I just need to move this to here. Okay. And let's erase everything. Now this time, the thing is that if we keep the uh -oh, if we keep the object right, I don't, don't want to draw this here. So object exactly at F. So now the object is F. Is at F. So we want to know where the image is going to form. So now do the same thing, please. You're going to draw a straight line first. OK, this line is not correct. From the very top, just make a straight line. The line would then go bend towards F like this. And the other ray should be drawn like this. The interesting thing about this is that these two rays are going to be just parallel. They're never going to meet. And even you extrapolate it, like extrapolation means that you basically extrapolate them like backwards. This will stay like this. It doesn't meet. So actually, image is not formed. Is it clear? It's just like this is how the lens behave, right? When it bends, the one razor goes straight. So it basically bends it exactly at the same angle through which the ray is going through the optical center. So it never meets. And if it doesn't meet, then the uh, image cannot be formed. Do you understand, Rabia? This is just yes, a property of that every lens that it does that okay a lens like this so who loves batman anyone here okay so moise can you tell me if there is a crime happening what would gotham city police department do to call batman Bad signal, I think. Yeah. Bad signal, right? So if you've seen that bad signal, right? It would look like this. And there was a lens inside. And it would actually cause the light to go straight. Because there's basically the image is here. And the reason there was a bat formed right here. There was a bat forming in the center. Is because the same the, that's the shadow or they printed this on the light so it forms at a very long distance but you don't know Alright, let's wait for others, please, two minutes.
Okay, so the point is that you don't know where the bat shadow is forming because the image never forms. It's just light going through its parallel light shows a beam of light. It's not actually there. Do you guys understand this? Yes. So since the object, basically the image is never formed, it would mean that basically it does not have any properties as well. So let's move to the fifth one. Shavi, is it, is it clear now? Shavi is, is here, okay. Now, let's go to uh, five. Afan, you asked me about um, the glasses thing? Spectacles. Spectacles, okay. I'm gonna answer it very, very soon now. So then, you uh what is this sorry you could not paste the content from your clip please oh no that's not fair let me just copy this again Okay, so like I, our intellectual curiosity is always there. Now this time, I would want to keep the object right before F. Okay, like that. So this is my object now. So the object is placed, placed before F and see what happens now. So the first ray is going to go straight like it always does. And then it's going to go through F like this. And the second ray is going to go towards the optical center like this. And this time you might realize that this is not basically um, parallel. And if your eye, if you're watching from here, so you, I would think that these rays are coming from behind, which means if you extrapolate them, extrapolate them backwards like this. So the, I would think that this is, this has come from a point from where the object is which means it's gonna look like this. And that would be your image. Is it clear, everybody? What I've just done, yes, this is called extrapolation. So we have done, we've extended the lines backwards and it feels like it's coming from there, okay? Now, so the image will always formed, will be formed beyond F. So it goes away from F. And it has some properties as well. Number one property, that it is a virtual image. Now when I say it's a virtual image, what I really mean by this is that it cannot be formed, I'm just gonna write it down here, cannot be formed on the screen and to just look at it you'll realize that basically it's not forming in the eye it's forming behind that which means uh, at the same place where the object is so that means that anytime you see a diagram where the image and object are formed at the same place 
you should always regard it as a virtual image. Is it clear everybody? Now, if you look at this, this is upright. Upright means that it is standing straight, just like the object is. It's not inverted like previous images were. And it is also magnified. Magnified because it's larger than the object. And this is a classical example of a magnifying glass. Is it clear, everybody? Okay, Soha, do you understand? Caroline, Afan, everything is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, since we have done, like, we know how to make images and see from the image what kind of properties they're going to hold. So from this point onward, we can talk about something called magnification. And magnification is basically linear, in our course it's only linear magnification, so we will to look at that. Linear magnification is basically height of an image over the height of an object. So that's the definition of this and that's the formula for this, okay? The other formula for this one is also that linear magnification is also dependent on the distance of image from lens over the distance of object from lens, all right? So one of the prime uses these days, like Afan has pointed out to us, it's basically use of spectacles and almost a lot of people actually wear them. And the reason is that there could be two different problems. These are medical conditions that people might have these days. And that is basically the image that we see from naked eye, maybe just uh, a little bit blur blurred, right? So what happens is that we're going to write spectacles and see what happens. So basically your eye looks like this actually. I'm not a bio person, so I don't really know exactly what I've never actually studied bio so I don't know but the thing is I think the eye looks like this okay and this is the place where the retina is where mostly the images are formed so suppose if you're looking at something like an arrow okay so this is our object so the problem arises when basically uh, basically when you look at any image, so the rays basically go straight to your eye, it's a converging lens actually, your eyeball, and then whatever that is called. And then it just uh, bends it like this, and it bends it like this. So basically the image that is formed on the eye is also like inverted and smaller than it is, unless it's very close, right? Let me 
this it is this this doesn't this is the image and this is the retina remember that okay the first problem usually that's how it works but the first problem that we generally see is that if you look at something from a distance so people may have this condition of short sightedness short sightedness means that a short sighted person can see image can see object that are closer clearly okay but they have a uh, issue that distant objects appear blurred so short sighted means that you are looking you can easily look at things which are closer to you okay now so what really happens is that suppose this is your eyeball and that's where the retina is so if the object is really really far away like here so when the light is coming from there it forms way before then it should like this and it causes basically a blurred image right so image is formed somewhere here and we don't want that right we don't want to do that okay wait a second somewhere from behind it's like coming here so it's not forming on the eye itself so what you're going to do is for this one to correct this we actually use a diverging lens because we don't want it to bend too soon so if you don't want to bend it too soon so suppose the same rays that we're talking about come from like really far away and now if you if you place a diverging lens in the middle like that okay fun like this so what will diverging lens really do let me just it is this this is not i have to show you the diverging lens will before the ray enters basically the eye lens it would cause it to bend a bit away is it clear fun and then because the eye is bending it too much because now it's like moving away it will bend too much but this time because of the lens which has diverged the rays it would bend it onto the retina and that's where the image is going to be is it clear yes sir so mostly people who cannot you know those people who have a difficulty in looking at things which are really far away they can correct it by putting um, a diverging lens okay all right shavish do you understand this and caroline and rabia yes sir yes sir the other condition is basically called the long sighted sightedness and long sightedness basically means a long sighted person sees distant objects clearly but has but I think I should write closer images 
the close, closer images appear blurred. So what you're going to do for that? So let's see first, let's draw the drawing and see how it works. So actually, if the this is your eyeball, and that's your eye. Oh no. And the object's really near, like somewhere here. So the image basically goes like this. Rays go like that. And because the ability of your eye to bend it more is compromised, which means it will not be able to bend it to much that would cause it to make an image behind retina which makes it um, makes that object blurred all right now to fix that what you're going to do is you're going to assist your eye in bending the image or converging the image more than it should and to do that, you got to introduce a converging lens in front of it. So if this is the object that we're looking at, the ray would go like this, and then this, it would converge it to your eye. And then the eye will converge it in even more. And it will cause it to form on exactly retina. And that's how it is fixed by using a converging lens. Is it clear, everybody? Yes, sir. All right. So this is all the chapter that was basically uh, I needed to cover.